Hello there, lads and ladies. Welcome back, finally, to another Tattoo story time. Today, I'm joined with my very lovely mother. Say hello, mother. Hello, mother. <laughs> hello, son. <laughs> hello, mother. <laughs> hello, son. <laughs> so, yes, we're here today to uh, talk about unmatching tattoos. I won't get my mother to show you because, honestly, this is I so awkward. You. Well, can you? Yeah. Can you lift your leg that high? Yeah. No, no, no I'm sitting here. <laughs> Just stand up. Oh, my back. Oh my god, I nearly fell off the chair. <laughs> Ow, you, you kicked my arm. Sorry. <laughs> you kind of need to get it. There oh. you go. There's there the tattoo. Oh, somewhat. Wait a minute. How about if we just move the camera? Oh, that would be easy. There we go. There's the tattoo. There you go. As you can see, it's healed roughly around the blue area here because she, like a sod, picked it. Which is the one thing you never do in a tattoo. You never pick your tattoos because, yes, they are a bit itchy at certain phases. You kind of need to slap around the tattoo and stuff like that to make it feel a little bit more uh, easy to handle, really, with, basically. But, yeah. Slap you around. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Don't choke, uh, all right? No. <laughs> That'd be a shame for me. At least then I wouldn't get an arse whipping anytime soon. Don't worry, she never beat me. I was a good boy. My sisters, on the other hand, I'm not so sure. You'll have to ask them. But yes, with our tattoos, so if you want to see mine, I've got mine on my forearm here. Let me try and angle it for you. Yes. I've okay. still, I still have the green in here, which was a bit of a mistake on the tattoo artist's half because it was meant to be turquoise. You see... My mum's is amethyst, which is my birthstone, and hers is turquoise, which is kind of why I've got my entire clouds here on my arm, basically. And don't worry, it's Our looking birthstone colours. Yeah, it's looking a little bit gnarly because it's still healing. But once it heals, it should finally start to look a little bit better. Then I can talk about that in another tattoo story time with you guys. But yeah, so if you're wondering, it's a marla bead. It goes all the way around my arm basically it, and mine goes around my ankle that's right it got specifically spicy around this end here basically so i wanted to bring you in and talk about your experience with the tattoo artist like what did you think of him when he first did it because i go to the same tattoo studio but i sometimes have different artists only recently have i finally like found an artist that knows me and my body well enough that he knows what gels well with my body but with my mum we kind of gave the reins to a new and up and coming tattoo artist and that was kind of the biggest mistake we ever made really. Well not so much for me because my tattoo came out kind of alright apart from the tassels and the colour of the two beads here. Apart from also there's a little bit of the amethyst there to show my mother's birthstone. Uh, my birthstone sorry. And uh, I still need to get the blue put in sooner or later. I need to get the turquoise added in because green is not at all what I asked for basically. So yeah, what do you think of the tattoo artist that did your leg? Well, the reason that I had the Marla beads put around my ankle in the first place is because I always wear, as you know, beads around my ankle. I've done for many years. Yeah. So I asked him to put it around my ankle. So he said, lay on the bed. I couldn't lay on the bed because I've got a bad back. So I sat on the bed and he put the, uh, the what they... The stencil yeah around it halfway up my leg and i went oh yeah. what are you doing he said well, i said no 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 not there it was a foot up from my ankle so i said no can i have it around my ankle so that was fine so he still put it an inch above where it should be yeah. but it was good it was cool and then we had all i had a smaller one than you've got obviously yeah, way smaller <laughs> i only got skinny little ankles but right on the back I should have had all the children and the grandchildren's initials put into them. That would have been a good idea. Yeah, that would have been. But instead of that, I just saved one at the very back with an L on it for Lauren and Luke. Yeah. And that is what's on the back of it. But if, yeah, it was quite good. If Not you're good wondering, name. my real middle name is Luke, but I don't go by it because I just don't like it. It's a bit too biblical for me. So that's kind of why sooner or later I want to change my name to Rubius Bartholomew or Bartholomew Rubius or something like that. But... I might probably keep the Luke as a double barreled name or something like that, I'm not so sure. Well, yeah, your sister chose that name for you. Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> Bless her. Yeah, it's the interesting thing with hers, because it's a very small little thing. Like, if you look close into one of these little things here, they're all different patterns. But with hers, she has like this small little L that goes down and right across it. 
So you can definitely see the small tiny little imprint of the L basically, which I thought was kind of a nice little touch that he did. But apart from that, I wasn't really a fan of it. You know, I really wasn't a fan of how he tattooed you. Well, he was no, he had to start somewhere, I suppose, but he was, he was all right. Yeah, but the fact that he put the stencil on without even asking you, like, oh, where would you like it? It's kind of like, oh, that's presumptuous. Well, yeah, I thought he would have known that I wanted it around my ankle, and he was prepared to go and do it until I said to him, no, 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 I don't want it halfway up my leg. And he said, oh, it looked nice. I said, but it's my leg, and I've got to walk about on it, so no, thank you. Mm. <laughs> Basically. But how did you sit for the tattoo? Um, oh, sit up, set up. With my foot out like that. No, I mean, how did how did it feel for you? Was it painful? Oh, I thought you meant what posture I was in. She was doing handstands, basically. <laughs> yeah, I was, yeah. No, so, it, uh, it hurt a bit. Yeah. But, you know, if you want these things, you have to tolerate it. I mean, when it's like that low on your foot, it's going to hurt. An awful lot of people will say that the foot tattoos hurt the worst, basically. But it depends on the person. Like with me, I think... Apart from my palm tattoo, I think when I got my wrist done around here, you can still see it kind of yellowish a little bit there. That's because it's healing. But my God, was it bleeding? I really should have like said to my tattoo artist, maybe go a little bit higher. But I thought, sod it, it will look good when it heals. So nice, it's different. Like if it's a one-off, it will be fine really. But yeah, I think with you is that you kind of like, it was nice that you actually kind of spoke up about the whole tattoo thing, really. Well, I wasn't going to let him put a tattoo halfway up my leg, now was I? Yeah. No. Because an awful lot of people that get tattoos don't really talk with their tattoo artists enough. I feel like they don't build a relationship with them and they don't, like, understand, like, you know, this is your body. You need to decide what you need to do with your tattoo and, know, and you know where you need to put it and what you want to put into your tattoo. And these tassels on mine, they come down over the top of my foot yeah they go over your ankle that didn't hurt but it was the around the ankle that hurt but my beads are smaller than yours yeah the problem is with these is because they're so small the line work is going to spread and it'll just be like black blob sooner or later no it's fine so you might want to get those extended no anyway. never it's like with my <laughs> no. it's like with my betty boot tattoo uh, sorry not betty boot betty rubble tattoo her eyes are completely blacked out now i'll talk about her at a later stage but yeah like i'm kind of upset that that tattoo was turned out the way it was because she was like my first crush when i uh, i was a kid basically you know kind of like how your crush was captain scarlet certainly was handsome the most captain handsome scarlet. puppet around town bless he was <laughs> wish you could pull his strings eh yeah <laughs> I actually bought her the whole DVD set. She hasn't watched it yet, unfortunately. Captain Scarlet! Du, 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 du. This is the voice of the Mr. Yons. The Mr. Yons, yes. <laughs> Reminds me of Spider-Man with Mysterio. Is it Mysterio? I can't... I can't remember Mr. the Mr. Yons. Mr. Yons. That's how you yeah. pronounce it. I yeah, it the Mr. Yons. No, Mr. Mr. Ons. Oh my god. Mr. Ons. No, Mr. Ons. That sounds like a science teacher I used to it's have. It's not two words. Captain Scarlet and the Mr. Ons. What, are they a superhero? I too? don't know, darling. I was only a kid. I was in love with Captain Scarlet. I just, you You'll know, lost in these little plastic it. eyes. You know. Didn't care what he was talking he about. Plastic plate. He didn't. He was like, move around. He could be going on about some fascist shit and she'd still break <laughs> up his eyes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, but that's interesting. But yeah, when I got mine done, um, I was really pissed off with the position I was sitting in. Like, I had to sit up a couple of times because... Like, there was sun coming in through the window, hitting my eyes. For me, it's not getting the tattoo done that annoys me. I actually really look forward to tattoo sessions, especially with an artist that knows, like, how to be gentle with a tattoo. You know, there are different ways to do a tattoo, how you wipe. For me, wiping is the worst thing, because once they wet it, they are waking all the nerves in your body, basically. Like, with this, I had to get, like, wiped 15 times overall. So much nicer than a whole sleeve, though. It's so different. I really like it, I suppose, because it's a colour as well. I think he's done it really, really good. Yeah, I do like the turquoise look. Deeper stands out. They all do. It's yeah, nice. that's the thing with my dog, Deeper, is you can't see it. Oh, no, 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 I'll do it. There you go. Sit still. There we go. So, as you can see, he's got, like, this portrait look around him. How it kind of gives uh, a nice little presumptuous look about how he is basically it gives it a nice little glow around his head even though he looks like he's got a bald patch looks like he's gone over with a lawnmower unfortunately that is how he looks he's still here you can't just see him because my body's in the way of the picture i don't need to show them that they know what he looks like here. They, know, they know what he looks like oh, okay <laughs> mind your own business mother you're kind of out of the shop yeah come on in, come on in. Mwah, love you. <laughs> i love you Mwah, <laughs> 
it's a little thing my mum does. Like, she came in one morning and just went, Mum, we're going to be in. I was just like, <laughs> what? Mahatma Gandhi. <laughs> I don't know why we say Mahatma Gandhi, but it's just something funny about us going, Mahatma Gandhi. <laughs> <laughs> we don't care, do we? we this is like a thing from Face Off, if you've ever seen it, like with John Travolta. She, he does this with his daughter where he goes and like wife. that. And the wife. That's how uh, they're able to recognise it's him. Because they don't say... Mahatma Gandhi. Yeah, they don't say Mahatma Gandhi. <laughs> That's just us, basically. Being silly. We're just weird like that. But uh, yeah, Nicolas Cage, bless him. Uh, like he was like in the body of John Travolta. No, John Travolta's face was on Nicolas Cage's body, who was the good guy, and Nicolas Cage's face was on the face of John Travolta, which is uh, weird, basically. You know, they're, it's like their bodies are switched, but it's not their faces. You know, it's kind of hard to explain without watching the film, basically. They know what faces. Face off these guys. Oh, you mean like in, oh, you mean how they took their face off, like in Face Off? And people have seen Face Off. It's I've, a good film. If you guys watch Face Off, please comment because I'm pretty sure not many people know what Face Off is. It's pretty funny though. It's nothing funny about it. Like Nicolas Cage in himself is like the weirdest actor you could ever come across. Like, who is a who makes a film about themselves trying to become like a world famous actor when they're already a world famous actor? He's famous because his uncle. Is of course uh, not mine. Yeah, no Coppola. Francis Ford Coppola is his, is uncle. his uncle. Yeah, didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. If I kept, if I had to think of another weird actor that plays weirdos quite well, is David Tennant. Like when he did yeah. um, Goblet of Fire, when he uh, well, I always think of him playing Mad Eye Moody, but it's technically another actor playing. Ma That's what he did. That's the thing that he does in <laughs> Harry Potter. He's like. Like he ticks with his tongue out half the time. Me. Father? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 we just we. <laughs> oh, yeah, who who played Barty Crouch? It was um Trigger yeah. from Only Fools and Horses, wasn't um, it? Um Oh god, what's his name? Yeah, it was I can't remember his name, but if Lloyd. you've seen Only Fools and Horses, he basically plays this guy called Trigger. Oh, god, who is he plays the um Ministry of Magic uh guy in that. I think Pat Lloyd's got a dull bell name. Yeah, Sadly, he plays the minister in there. He's Barty Crouch, basically. Brilliant and actor. David Tennant plays Barty Crouch Jr., who technically is playing Mad-Eye Moody, but Mad-Eye Moody is played by a different actor. But only you see David Tennant, like, maybe four, maybe five times throughout the series. Well, throughout the film, basically. So you right more when you see him. Yeah, you see more of his tongue, which is a brilliant <laughs> side actor to David Tennant, basically. But nothing against David. He's a brilliant actor, but it's just, I feel he plays, like, crazy people better than most would tend to think really which is pretty interesting because there's an awful lot of weird characters well if you're Harry talking Potter. about weird character acting it's got to be tom cruise in interview with the vampire because he was uh, really uh, weird in that and since i've seen him in it i can't look at him any other way really yeah then a gay vampire sorry a gay vampire yeah that's the problem you've got what did he just look like never the know? fact that they've romanticized the living heck out of bram stoker's version of dracula which is just meant to be like oh it was good and like, he played the part well like no but he just looked really weird like no Sferatu to me is the original vampire but the way bram stoker did it is pretty interesting because it kind of gave like this chivalrous gentleman look to like this bloodthirsty monster which makes you think oh maybe they're a little bit more human than you tend to think but that's the whole point of a vampire is for them to make you think they're human I yeah. think that was the first film Kirsten Dunst was in. That's she right. Was she was like 12, wasn't but, she? No, she might have been. No, I think she might have been. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that whole 12, film was know. just weird. I didn't really enjoy it whatsoever, really. I just, I just oh, I thought it was good. I, I don't know about the whole idea of like those three working together as vampires, basically. Anyway, we're doing a film critique here. We're all talking yeah, about... the film critique idea would be pretty good wouldn't it <laughs> yeah, i get your idea on some crap films yeah and just put it together yes we like, what's that we'll one film that. what's that one film with the like the very low flame flame the frame rates of the skeletons you know where they're blocky you know i don't know what you're talking about you don't watch much horror do you i watch lots because it doesn't frighten me it bores me can you remember the horror film we went to go watch last week halloween oh yeah who's the main killer in that michael myers She's lucky. <laughs> you were very lucky because I think last time before we went to go see it, you kept asking me, are we going to go watch that, uh, what is it, Jason Voorhees guy? And I'm like, no, mum, that's Friday the 13th. <laughs> oh, I knew Jamie Lee Curtis was in it, though. That was good, actually. That was a good film. Really? Yeah. 
Yeah, it was good because it was the end. You know, that's there's never going to be any more. The so only downside good. of it is the fact that we didn't get to see much of Michael Myers. You know, it's just a couple of snippets here and there. And if you're, if I'm spoiling, you know, just no, you can't, mustn't say, mustn't say, because you'll ruin it. It's just a good film. If you want to go and see it, fair, go and see it. It's most, good. To be fair, most people have seen it anyway. And an awful lot of people just watch it just to crap on shit these days. Although honestly, I did like Halloween. Like, yeah, Halloween ends. That's what it's called. Don't get out of the way I can't. Now. I've got something in my eye. <laughs> I've got something in my eye. But anyway, yeah. The reason why <sighs> Halloween Ends was really good was due to the fact that I quite liked the whole idea of the did he or didn't he with the kids who turned... Nah, you can't say that. What does it matter? They would have seen it. Oh, well, it does say in, in the, you know, front that he, he gets done for throwing the child who he's looking basically after. there's a guy that has nothing Over to do with Halloween whatsoever he's basically uh, involved with the death of this kid that fell off of a baluster because he's babysitting for him because the kid locked him in an attic and as he kicked the door open we're meant to believe that he hit the kid and he went over the banister and then fell to his death but we're not sure about that no we weren't so sure because there was a scene that I wasn't even so sure myself where we it was showing like a flashback or maybe a dream sequence of him kicking the door open but he doesn't hit the kid and then it shows him like grabbing the kid picking him up and then tossing him over the banister we think Michael Myers might have picked him up and thrown him over there well she does I don't because I do at the time Michael is in the sewer so why he would walk around you don't know that ha Haddonfield is just but you don't know that he was, he, he was in the sewer because that was the beginning of the film so you don't know yeah but all we see is this person with a mask on throwing the kid over the banister yeah but look the exorcist right the devil appeared four times in the exorcist it took me to read the book before I realised how many times wasn't he one of the homeless people as well yeah that's right yeah, because he shows up a few times, especially I, like at the beginning and the end of Exorcist 2, where the person who comes out with like uh, this rag over their head, or this bedding just comes after the nurse with like a syringe. Like that bit really scared the crap out of me because it was just so unexpected. What was that in? I think it was the end of Exorcist, wasn't it? Where she gets hospitalised and then she comes out, like some woman gets hosp hospitalised and then she like comes out with this syringe to stab the nurse after she's done like doing her fiddlesticks with the patient it might either be exorcist 2 or exorcist no, 1 i'm not so sure not the original but it's a very good film like it's one of the original horrors that really uh resonates with you i mean was on last night we should have watched that lee remick gregory peck old actors because you are not going to know who they are now but they were brilliant an awful lot that of... was a good film I'm actually quite intrigued in the horror production studios because, like Hammer, they do an awful lot of horrors that are close to um, the actors. Like they stay loyal to the actors, unlike The Shining, where um, who was the actress in The Shining along with Jack Nicholson? Duvall. Something Duvall. Yeah. What's her name? Oh. Anyway, the actress, bless her. I can see her face. The there. director basically tried to create a very stressful situation and envi environment for her so it would and Jack Nicholson. yeah so it would come across within the shining like Shelley Duvall Shelley Duvall that's it where she would she would she would seem stressed out at all times so she would have like this animosity between her and the director which really paid off well for the film but honestly it didn't do much for her mental health because it looked like she aged like 20 years or even 30 years with how stressed she looked after the whole production scenes were done and all that stuff like in that bit where Jack Nelson is like axing down the door at her, like you can really see the fear in her eyes, and I think it's mostly due to the fact that she's been so worn down over the past he like is Johnny. months and years doing that <laughs> film, basically. Classic scene as well, really good scene. I, the one scene I did not like is where he got frozen. He's just sat there like, like really stupid looking. One flew over the cuckoo's nest. There's a film. No, that's Ratchet. Now that's a good series actually to watch. Like that's not a really series. Good. It's a film. No, they did, came out of a series with it recently. Don't you remember? No, I wouldn't have watched that. Yeah, they did like a series of Nurse Ratchet. Yeah. Where she's like going around doing murders and stuff like that, and she's trying to hide it. That was a really good film. <laughs> so yes, well, apart from the odd film critic and all that. Thank you all so much for watching another Tattoo Story Time. Yes, yeah, sorry we went off. <laughs> we t me and Hope tend to do that. We ramble about random shit half the time, so we can only apologise. No. Well, yeah. Yeah. Because we were meant to speak about our tattoos. But that was from you to me, and I love you. Thank you for that. That's all right, right. sweetie. Mahama <laughs> <laughs> Nah.
Right, I'll see you all next time, lads and ladies. Hopefully I'll be talking about the arm tattoo, or hopefully there'll be another game review sooner or later. But, um, well, gameplay. So, with that, lads and ladies, I thank you ever so much, and um, I'll see you next time, whatever I do around here. Take care, my friends.